Spring 1774, a time of uncertainty in the North American colonies. As British Parliament readies a response to the Boston Tea Party, tensions between patriots and loyalists continue to rise. Some fear violence is inevitable. Despite this growing discord, guests from both opposing factions converge on Elizabethtown, New Jersey to celebrate a happy occasion. Prominent New York lawyer and politician William Livingston readies his new estate to welcome the elite society of both New York and New Jersey to the quiet outskirts of Elizabethtown. They're attending the wedding of his youngest daughter, Sarah, to John Jay, a rising star on the New York legal scene. And as the buzz of young love passes through the happy couple and their guests, the energy shifts and conversations turn towards unions of a different sort. Mrs. Stockton, <laughs> welcome. Welcome to my new home. Mr. Livingston, it is delightful to see you. I am so pleased you're able to join us. Is Mr. Stockton here? Oh, just a few steps behind. It is I who had to run after a certain stir-crazy <laughs> ruffian cooped up too long in a carriage. Mm. But congratulations to you and Susanna for securing such an excellent match for your Sally. John Jay is a fine and promising lawyer and perhaps an even better man. Oh, indeed. I'm quite fond of the young man. Lawyers we have in great abundance, but good men are in rather short supply these days. <laughs> I hope your journey to the outskirts of Elizabeth was without incident, I trust? Yes, the journey was long, but upon viewing it myself, let me declare how truly glorious it is here. I knew it had to be idyllic if you were to coax your wife and daughters <laughs> to leave the city. Yes. Uh... Well, uh, thank you. As soon as we acquired the land, we immediately began making improvements. That is plain to see. You have the makings of a lovely orchard. Well, I certainly hope so. We've planted dozens of apple trees, uh, imported the finest pears and plums, and uh, but mind your step. My daughters will have my head if one of their <laughs> precious horse chestnut oh. sprouts is trampled. Uh -huh. They're shipped in all the way from London. Ah, so this is what you envisioned when you wrote your Philosophic solitude. <laughs> flatter me, Mrs. Stockton. But yes, perhaps I can make that young dream come true here and now and be at peace. If we remain at peace, I worry. But I hope you will grace us with some of your very fine verses before <laughs> the end of the day. Perhaps something of a lighter nature. Now it is you who seek to flatter me. See the blessed hour arrive. Even now, the peaceful clime I view, where gentle love and virtue thrives, and souls their lapsed powers renew. <laughs> what beautiful poetry, <laughs> most apt for this auspicious day. Uh, could this young Hercules be Lucius? My, how you have sprouted. <laughs> that is correct, sir. This is Lucius Horatio. Careful, though. He has an unending supply of rambunctious energy <laughs> and relishes running through this countryside. This beautiful countryside, mm -hmm. especially now that he has been breached. Oh, well, excellent. Well, run along, young master, and explore. But uh, please, try to avoid setting the house ablaze until <laughs> after dinner. I'm afraid <laughs> Mrs. Livingston would insist. <laughs> oh, and mind the horse chestnuts, lad. Gentlemen, how is the groom proceeding? Uh, he is still present, cousin, <laughs> which I consider to be a most advantageous sign. <laughs> Huzzah! Robert, John Jay is a courageous young man. Do you think that I could warm to such a rascal who would slight us in such a cruel manner? <laughs> oh, no, no. My faint slight was merely an attempt to provoke Jay to quiver, <laughs> an act I've rarely witnessed in his company. That is true. Certainly not in any of our more trying court cases, though, if any event would deem it prudent to do so. <laughs> Your confidences, gentlemen, are a pleasant distraction, though it is not the father's wrath that yields such quaking in me, but that of his headstrong daughter. 
And how is it, sir, that Mr. J managed to escape your wrath in this? The holding of an Anglican ceremony in the parlor of such a prominent public accuser of the Episcopal Church such as yourself? Mr. Hamilton, it is a pity you were not in attendance during our debates of the moot. Despite our differences, there I discerned a man of quality and intelligence, more than enough to override any misgivings I might possibly have about his faith. More pertinent, I clearly perceive his love for Sally to be true, as does Sally. Ah, well, surely, sir, there were hesitations beyond Jay's religion. What of that pernicious rumor that Jay only began to court Sally in response to being rejected, not once, but twice, by women of the Delancey clan, <laughs> your family's sworn political opponents? <laughs> <laughs> Cavorting with the enemy, Jay? <laughs> Robert, friend, Clearly this lover of the king will not do for your dear cousin. Sir, if you desire it so, I will gladly take the place of Jay on this momentous day. <laughs> <laughs> to any tendencies or grievances on your part, of course. <laughs> I will fall upon this sword if I must. <laughs> and Sally will be just a consequent prize. <laughs> And a beautiful one at that. <laughs> and break poor Kitty's heart, Alexander. Oh, no, 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 that will not do at all. However, if somehow you manage to finish your schooling and rise in rank, <laughs> I might be inclined to consider a possible coupling. Deliver this to Kitty at once. Are you quite sure about this dress, sister? Perhaps there's still time to invite the dressmaker up and make some changes. Another bow or some more frills? Oh, I don't know. Will there be enough time, Mother? You're fine. Oh, hideous thing. I've seen better dresses on the horses. Oh, Sarah, of course you will love it. You are marrying John Jay, not the Prince of Silk and Lace. He's a respectable man, yes, but he does not come from a powerful family such as ours. Kitty. Though he does not come from a family of great stature, prosperous futures come from a humble beginning. Like your horse chestnuts. Susan, please. No, Sally. Mr. J is one lucky gentleman, to be sure. But you need to be the kind of wife he'll expect you to be. And you've seen how I treated your father. This is not a trivial matter. Nevertheless, he will rely on you to run his household, serve him and his friends, raise his children and his fortunes. And you must be agreeable to every one of his needs. Oh, mother, of course Sarah knows her duty. She is the best one of us fit for marriage. And she's lucky to be marrying so soon, for either of us, no less. You have been a great example, mother. I am reserved today, but I'm sure I will learn in time. I truly wish our friend Mary Phillips were here to calm my nerves. What a pity. It was too hot for her to make the journey. Poor Mary. Miss Sarah, madam. Which would you prefer, the pearls or the gold chain? The pearls. Oh, how I hope to have a dance with Mr. Hamilton this evening. His correspondence seems to recommend his manner well. He's fine, he's fine. Correspondence, yes, but actions, perhaps not. If his reputation is to be believed, he does not seem fit for the life of marriage yet. Far too busy a social calendar. Ladies. Behave yourselves. Well, you do look splendid, Sarah. Mr. J truly will not be able to keep his eyes off of you. <laughs> Lucius, go find something useful to do. Well, what did she say? This way, Brockholst. I'm quite sure this is where the brandy has absconded to. Cheers, brother, and welcome. Hello, Brock. Is everything looking in order out there? Greetings, gentlemen. The guests are beginning to arrive in some number. Mr. Oliver Delancey's entourage is becoming quite restless. Jay, your guests, I presume? <laughs> <laughs> Were the Delanceys as loyal to the principle of promptitude as they are to the principles of unbridled taxation, we might engage more harmoniously on civic discussions. Brockholst, please direct the Delanceys to the barn for the ceremony. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Brock, my soon-to-be brother. I believe a congratulations is in order. This fine young man will soon graduate from college. Huzzah! Huzzah! 
Thank you very much, gentlemen. Do tell me, Brock, you must have witnessed the tea protest there last January? Uh, yes, is it true that they strung up an effigy of Governor Hutchinson with a tea canister around his neck? <laughs> a sight that must have been. A sight? Such rash and intemperate behavior by a mob should not be commended, Alexander, even if there is apt justification. You are, of course, right to recommend prudence, John, but I could not help but cheer the burning of the winter store of tea in unanimity with other like protests in Boston and New York. And elsewhere in New Jersey as well. Just last week, the Sons of Liberty uh, stopped a shipment of tea from entering customs in Sandy Hook, a sign that these protests are no aberration and are in fact gaining in virulence. It is not the protests I speak against, but rather the violence and vitriol against kinsmen that worries me. Britain is our mother country, and once our grievances are redressed, any venom spewed forth will not make reconciliation any easier. A man of temperate mind and quality. <laughs> Sir, some of the guests are asking for tea. Coffee will do. And if it will not, you can direct them to the horse trough outside. <laughs> They'll find no tea in this house. <laughs> Get that turkey basted now. That was supposed to be done regularly with shrewdness. How is that the ceremony is moments from commencement and I have yet to see the asparagus? Beef tongues. We'll get those beef tongues doing now, Eliza, or they will never be tender. Pigeon pie is done, but it cannot be served without the side of yellow crookneck squash. Where is the yellow crookneck squash, Eliza? Right. The plum cake has about cooled. If one of you diligent artisans could find it within yourselves to get the white frosting for the bride's cake started, then both cakes might even be ready in time to be displayed. And if God's grace is be bountiful, they might even be enjoyed. Oh, no. And Master, I must ask you to stop at once. This is no place for a dignified youth such as yourself. Find your way upstairs at once. Eliza! Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of God to witness and bless the joining of this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Will you have this man to be your husband to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and obey? That's what they like to think. Uh, of course only the woman has to obey. In time that will change, I assure you. In sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful as long as you both shall live? I will. Will all of you witnessing these promises do all in your power to uphold these two persons in their marriage? We will. In the name of God, I, John Jay. And I, Sarah Livingston. Take, take you to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. The rings. Bless, O Lord, these rings as a sign of the vows by which this man and this woman have bound themselves to each other through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Those who God hath joined together, let no one put asunder. Father Supreme of human race, who dwell of in unapproached light, beyond the pure Empyrean where thou wills high than of above all height. Whilst with thy name the heavens resound, let earth one genial chorus voice, and all beneath the spacious sky unite in thy stupendous praise. With sacred awe, let every tongue pronounce the dearest tremendous name, and far as heard, be far diffused, profoundest reverence all around. Amen. Amen. You may kiss the bride.
Coffee, sir? Coffee? What abomination upon the king is this? Where is the tea? Well, there is no tea. Upon request of Master Livingston, there is only coffee. I'll never drink such a creation. Get it out of my face. What a marvelous affair. Yes, it is. And I hope, madame, you're enjoying the food. Of course, every piece of it, especially the yellow crookneck squash. I hope you'll enjoy the wedding cake. Much time was spent making it perfect. Young master here almost took a piece of it while I was being prepared. Oh, you can't fault him. Children will be children. If it's as good as you say, I might have tried to steal a piece too. It's almost time for you to toast the blessed couple, sir. Oh, yes, of course. Follow me down the wine cellar. We'll choose an appropriate spirit. You wouldn't believe the things I've been hearing. It would seem the guests have reckoned Kitty and that treacherous Hamilton something of an item. Is that so? Father, I do believe dear Kitty would be better matched with someone of more dignity. Junior. I would find it most fortunate if your sister were to wed a suitor of Hamilton's promise. Perhaps one with less of a thirst for celebration as her brother. Hamilton's promise? You puffed that boy up, sir. Now, Junior. I... <laughs> we need to choose refreshment for the guests. If young Master Livingston has left a drop. We saw plenty of your bottles of rum. Or if that's not to your liking, perhaps the cider? Or did you import them to sit in a dank basement unenjoyed, Oh, sir? this is a transcendent thing we are celebrating here today. My daughter has just been married, and I'll be damned if I toast with rum or cider. Now, you speak of imports lying about. Do we have any more of that Portuguese wine? Ah. I want the memory of this day to leave a good taste in my mouth, and perhaps a touch of the spell of Dionysus on my countenance. <laughs> I do believe the Madeira would go down a right smash, Father. You see? Consensus. Grab the Madeira. Junior, come along. No good has ever come from skulking about in dark wine cellars. There you are, child. Now stay within my sights. A toast to the king, the queen, the prince of Wales, and the royal family. May the interests of Great Britain and her colonies be always united in corresponding providence. Do you think he forgot anyone? Perhaps he'll toast to the Duke of Canterbury next. To George III, in his most august title. Here, here. Grant him long to reign a contented and free people. And may he never desire loyal subjects ready to defend the dignity of the crown against injurious trespasses of liberty. May Great Britain see her error before America ceases in affection. Huzzah. Huzzah! And to this day, I would toast the blessed couple to John Jay, my new son, and to my precious daughter, Sarah Jay. I hope you all enjoyed the festivities and applaud me as I introduce this new home as Liberty Hall. To Liberty Hall! Although I adore the name, I do believe Ursino would be a better fit for this rural manor. Three cheers to Liberty Hall! Huzzah! 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 Huzzah!